New poster nets ready. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. And also welcome to the Brook Jareth. We are at such an incredible time. It is so amazing to see how the Lord is pulling together so many resources quickly. He's making so much happen very quickly. And it's being used not just here at the Book of Cherith, but what is being done here is preparing material and resources for you to use in your corner of the vineyards. Nets that you can use, nets that you can set out now for the days ahead. Because we are launching out into the deep. We are rising up to the king's call, to the commission that he is showing us the opportunity at this very late hour. And he is giving wisdom and strength and liberty to produce these nets. And then we pass them on to you and you can set them out in your areas in the different ways too as well. It truly is incredible to see how the Lord is laying out the nets and enabling the nets in such a wide, incredible way that I can't even wrap my mind around just all the different little boats, all our partner boats all over the world that are letting down the nets that he has prepared for such a time as this, such a time as this. And in our last video, we talked about some of the new posters that we had been developing for the Rapture Library, which is the base camp, the factory, if you will, for these nets. This really enables us, as we go through the process of thinking what resources would be good to have on hand, as we go through those processes and actually put into practice the resources and information and how to tie it all together and just make it practical, then we can pass that on to you, too. The Brook Cherith, the Rapture Library trailer, is a factory for you to produce nets for you. And for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world, it really is incredible to see how the Lord is using the work here to prepare so many nets that go into so many corners of our world, so many opportunities. So in our last video, we talked about some of the new posters. And praise the Lord, they are now available on rapturelibrary.com. Now, obviously, we all don't have ways to print posters at our house, so you will have to go to an office-type store to print them out, such as Staples or Office Depot or even FedEx stores and UPS stores. Those offer printing services, too. So you will have to take it somewhere to print it because most people don't have printers this size. I don't either, but the resources are available for you. So if you go to rapturelibrary.com, I've also updated it a little bit. And it's broken down into several sections. The first section has the top questions. What are people going to be wondering right away after the rapture? And this is whether they come to the rapture trailer or come to your location, to your embassy, and they come across the materials there. Some of the first questions that are going to be in their mind are addressed by, was that really the rapture? Mainly because the way it's going to unfold in the world will be so different than what so many people have been preconditioned through Hollywood movies and the left behind garbage books. There's been so much preconditioning where people have a different concept of how the rapture will happen. Different than what the Bible says, this is the way it's going to happen. And so that's why there's going to be a lot of confusion. A lot of people may suspect that was the rapture. But it's going to be so radically different than what they were preconditioned that there's going to be a lot of confusion with the subject. Just was that even really the rapture? So praise the Lord, some of the new posters that we have in this section, or we now have the Spanish versions of all four of these main posters now available too. Available in two foot by three foot format, which is very easy for you to print at most office stores. And they could even mount it for you and laminate it for you there. And typically to have it mounted and laminated is about $70. Usually if you just get it printed and laminated, it's about $30, $40. But we now have the Spanish version of these posters available. So the most important posters are now available in English and Spanish. So if you have a Spanish ministry or know a Spanish church, these are some great resources that they can start producing and getting printed now. We, of course, also have the handout version, the 11 by 17 folded version of the same information. So they now have posters that they could read and also handouts that they could take home as well. And we also have translations in Farsi for some of this material as well. And again, praise the Lord and so many thanks to the individuals who are translating this material. It truly is a labor of love. And it takes a lot of time for them to translate it from one language to another and just get the fact checking. And especially for Farsi, this is interesting because they read different. It's read from right to left. And so then there's all the formatting changes and differences there too. And so it truly is a labor of love. And so many thanks to those who translate this material. And it is a labor of love because it is done out of a love for their kinsmen, for those who share so many things in common. And also for those that the Lord has knit our heart. 
to those of other languages or cultures and the Lord has impressed upon us a need and ministry outreach so many opportunities that is what is so incredible to see just how the Lord is bringing people across our path here with the Brook Terrace just those who can produce nets some for their native language some for others that the Lord has laid a certain language on their heart and ministry outreach so it truly is incredible to see what the Lord is preparing at this late hour so many nets are available for you today and there's so many communities you know a lot of people think of Iran with Farsi obviously but there's so many communities in other parts of this world and I know several I mean, you'd be surprised where there's different communities of these different language groups where they are and so many areas that the Lord is preparing nets for them he's thinking of them all and they are all over the place definitely check out the first section there's so many opportunities now for three different languages just with these top questions and then the second section that is listed is more of a follow-up. The first section answers what are going to be the main questions on their mind. And then a follow-up is, okay, because you now know that information, here is what you should also know that goes with that. And then also the call for salvation. And so praise the Lord, we have that information also available in Farsi. And we also have a Spanish version in the works right now for the raisings, resurrections, and returnings resource as well. But the third section is a totally new section. The first section answers the most important questions, then there's the follow-up. And the third section really revisits the rapture doctrine and really emphasizes at home more granular details that, yes, Scripture talks a lot about this. This is an expectation that goes all the way back through the Old Testament. And in fact, you will best understand what Christ is talking about in the New Testament if you understand the Old Testament prophecies about the rapture. So check out this third section. You can download the PDFs. You can download them to a thumb drive, take them to the print store, get them printed. They're all two by three, which is, again, easy for most people to print at their different stores. But one of the new resources is the Final Countdown, which reviews the major celestial signs over a timeline going back to 2014. Most of the celestial signs that many people would recognize might have heard on the news, but then also the calls for peace and safety and how that has led our understanding about where we are now and we can see what was started back in early 2017 definitely we can definitely see how that has led and increased in tempo and volume and frequency whatever led to January 28th the main mile marker for peace and safety calls and then everything after that particularly on September 15th and around there all that has been looking back toward January 28th because that is the major peace and safety warnings that's when they said, and particularly they, for the past three years, who had been preparing and building up to that moment. So January 28th needs to be seen as a three-year effort building to that moment. And so that really brings our attention to where we are now and really drives it home how important this time is. Yes, this is an expected time. We will see the day approaching. Scripture tells us that. In Hebrews and in Thessalonians, we will know that it's coming. We will see it approaching. We're even told that there's going to be a distinct time when certain things are going to be said. And from that, our understanding can guide us to where we can see the day approaching. And especially more as we review it, we can really see, wow, yeah, it really has been leading and building up to this time where we are right now. And this post resource is very important, and I highly suggest if you can, print it out. Because a lot of people, they'll look at the rapture material. And there's a lot of people who would believe in the rapture. But because of the way it unfolds, different than what they are preconditioned, and other reasons too, they will have difficulty accepting that yes, that actually happened now. And what I mean by that is when people are in a traumatic situation, particularly with their hopes and their expectations and an emotional involvement tied to it as well, when that is dashed, there is a large degree of denial. And so we have to keep that in mind with all the resources that we lay out for people, particularly if we suspect that they're already familiar with the rapture, is understand their mind is going to be working over time, trying to convince them that that wasn't the rapture. And particularly one of the big dangers for very emotional situations such as what is expected and being very traumatic and everything, there is going to be a strong tendency to deny that that was rapture, even if they strongly suspect that it was rapture. And you see this even today. I mean, even this week, particularly with the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, you have so many people who have put their hopes on the rapture must happen on that day. And then the Feast of Trumpets came and then nothing happened, which obviously scripture tells us. And Christ said, you won't know when I'm coming. 
and he's coming at a time we think not. So when people tell you he's coming on the Feast of Trumpets or the Day of Atonement, you can almost bet real money that he's not coming on that day because everybody's expecting and they're looking for a day that goes contrary to his instructions. But you watch many professing Christians' reaction who have their emotions tied to an expectation on the Feast of Trumpets and what happens when he doesn't come. The next few days, the next few weeks, they are in a major slump, major depressed. But you also see a large degree of denial because almost immediately they start looking for, well, maybe that wasn't the real Feast of Trumpets. Maybe it's, maybe it's in a week or two or, you know, maybe it's some other time. Let's, let's reassess the calendar now and, because that had to be the Feast of Trumpets. And, you know, the, the rapture didn't happen, so obviously that wasn't the Feast of Trumpets. You know, it is amazing the mental gymnastics and the absolute garbage that is thrown up against the wall when people get into a state of denial and the world is going to see this when the rapture happens you're going to have people who should know that yes that was the rapture but they are automatically going to be latching on to some of the most ridiculous ideas trying to convince themselves that no that that wasn't really the rapture the the rapture uh, no that couldn't be the rapture that couldn't be the rapture you're going to see them latch on to that and that's why it's so important to have other information, other posters that also emphasize not just the rapture doctrine, but also emphasize, yes, this is the time that was expected for the sun destruction when the days of Noah and Lot end. So these resources are not only emphasizing and reinforcing that, yes, that was a rapture. It's also emphasizing, yes, this is the expected time that the rapture should be happening. This is the right time, too. These both go together. The what was supposed to happen goes with the when it was supposed to happen. And just like we see a large degree of denial going on today with so many professing Christians regarding the Feast of Trumpets and the Rapture, and they, they just don't want to accept what Christ said. They don't have an ear to hear what Christ said about His coming, that He is coming as a thief. And so many different ways that He reworded it too. And so they will even change the calendar, even though the first page of the Bible tells you the sun and the moon determine the days. Not people's opinion, not other signs that they may think that they see. No. No, the first day of the seventh month is pretty clear as to when that happens. And a lot of people get confused with the Feast of Trumpets and Rosh Hashanah, which is not the same thing at all. That's the start of the civil calendar. And then people mix in Jewish traditions. Always go back to what does Scripture say. And that's the whole purpose of all these resources. Point people back to not tradition, not opinion, but what does Scripture say about His coming? How is He coming? When is He coming? And point them to all of them. Try to cover all the bases that, yes, this was the rapture. Here's how it happened. Different than what you've been preconditioned. But also, this is the expected time. And we've been given so many forewarnings years in advance leading up to this time expecting the rapture to even happen at this time. So I highly encourage you, if you can, print out the final countdown as a poster. It can be a great reinforcement that, yes, things have been building to this time prophetically to unfold. And namely, it was the rapture. This is when the days of Noah and Lot ended. Again, keep in mind a lot of different people who come across the resources will have different doctrinal positions regarding the rapture. Some will be fervently against it. And so that's why you can point out from Scripture the rapture doctrine, but then also point out this is the expected time too. There's going to be a lot of denial, mental denial going on. And the mind's also going to be playing a lot of mental tricks too. If you've ever been in a very traumatic situation where you've lost people suddenly, you know what I'm talking about. And so just keep that in mind when the rapture happens. There's going to be a lot of denial. People not wanting to accept what they highly suspect is true. They just don't. They will not want to accept it. And so the more resources we can lay out of, yes, this is why it should happen. This is the way and how Christ said it would happen. And here is when it should happen. And the more we can cover all those bases of how, when, why, where, and all that, they can help counterbalance the denial and really get them to help start accepting that, yes, that was really the rapture. Print that out if you can. We also have the other posters. 
the rapture in the Old Testament. Again, this just really emphasizes to them, particularly if they have a doctoral position that's not very favorable to the rapture, that can really emphasize to them that yes, scripture talks throughout it about this whole promise leading up to the start of the day of indignation. He is gonna call his wise and faithful servants, those who he wrote down in the book of remembrance, those who served him into the chamber of safety. And for those who might have been raised and preconditioned with a different doctrinal position, who don't want to accept that the rapture is even possible, these resources also emphasize and remind them of what Christ said, that yes, he would be coming to take his wise and faithful servants to where he is now, and that is heaven. And so these resources are not just for those who believe in the rapture or might even know about the rapture. It's designed to cover multiple bases, and that is one advantage of the rapture library. Here, the trailer is laying it out, really mentally get to walk through what are the different types of people who are going to be coming through this? What's the different types of audiences? Not even assuming a Christian background. You know, what about someone who's not even Christian at all? Or what about someone who has a completely different doctrinal perspective? This factory here of the Brook Chair at this base camp really allows us to mentally walk through and simulate the rapture and consider the different audiences who are going to be considering this information and tailor resources and nets specifically for them and nets that you can use too as well. So all these posters are available. Definitely download them, print them out. And again, most of this material is from the When to Watch booklet. So if you print that out eight and a half by 11, you have the same information. The posters just make it really easy and just hold it up in front of their face for them to read it and see it right away. And again, emphasizing Christ's first and second comings because some people really like to focus on, well, no, the rapture can't be possible because there's only one more coming of Christ. But no, that's not true. Christ has multiple comings, just two that are official as king. He has multiple comings. So we try to head off. What are the major excuses that people are going to be latching on to trying to deny what they suspect just happened? And then we also have another overview, the sequence of events that Christ illustrated. The peace and safety calls are going to be warning you that this day is approaching. You're going to see it approaching. That sun destruction is coming. That sun destruction is going to mean the end of the days of Noah and Lot while life is going on like normal. And there is only one escape. So again, if you can, download these resources, print them out. One affordable option to keep in mind is... I know the UPS store, and probably some of the other office stores do it too, if you ask them to print it on plain paper, not poster paper, plain paper, which is just as thin as normal paper, so it's not very substantial, but if you get it printed on plain paper, it is quite a bit cheaper. And so if you're just going to staple it or tape it up to a board or cork board or something like that, that's one way to go. And praise the Lord, I was able to update the Rapture Library trailer information part on the page. Again, just giving more details so you can show your friends and those who might be interested in helping this project, helping this base camp factory produce more nets. And Lord willing, within a day, we'll finish up the large mural and get that out the door. And as soon as we get the mural done and we have verified the printing process, we are going to make the poster available to you too. And there's going to be instructions once we get the instructions clear and understandable. We're going to have the instructions there in a place where we're getting it printed, where you could probably get it printed too, and just some other avenues that you might be able to print it out as well, or your church group or something. This is a large poster, and maybe your church study group will want to print it out. Who knows? But we will make the files and instructions available to you in a few days once we get it out the door and we can see the whole process ourselves too. So again, we need your help to make that possible so we can then pass on this net and that information to y'all. And it has been so incredible just as I've been working on this mural and just filling out all the details. It is incredible just to consider where the Lord has brought our attention now with Sagittarius and Jupiter there and near the Milky Way, the fiery throne of God picture. And so many things being released and the expectation of more things about to be released too. There's so many things that have brought us to this point here. But it's also been incredible. The Lord was just showing this to me yesterday. And this was one of those things that I just about shouted hallelujah. Just about jumped out of my skin. It's so incredible. We see where Jupiter is now. But we also see that around March 5th and 6th of 2021, Jupiter will be in Capricornus, which is the next constellation. And we see that it will be at the midst of it, 1,260 days after the Revelation 12 sign, that celestial date marker. So... Going by the celestial date markers, May 5th, 6th, 2021 is where Jupiter will be at the end of the tribulation. 
The tribulation hasn't started yet. Once Satan is unrestrained, he's going to be given power to change times and laws, and he's going to be resetting time back to about 2012, resetting the clock, and the world will see the Revelation 12 sign again. But when the tribulation does end, it will be right there in the midst of Capricornus, which is the sea goat. And this is so beautiful because the Lord was pointing out to me, you know, the sea goat is a goat and a fish combo. It's a creature that does not exist anywhere in nature, obviously. But as Bullinger points out, it is a creature that does exist in grace, through grace. Because we are reminded that the goat in scripture was offered as the sin offering. It is offered as the atonement for the people. And so the picture of Capricornus is beautiful because it pictures the goat that was slain as a sin offering for an atonement for the fish. And the Lord was just really impressing upon me this, this whole picture that he's been having us focus on lately of launching out into the deep and letting down the nets for a draft, which is what? A catch of fishes. And here to see this whole picture, the celestial learning journey that he's been bringing us on, where does it lead? 1,260 days after the Revelation 12 sign leads us to where? Leads us to the goat who desires to save the fish, who has redeemed the fish. And that is the conclusion of the tribulation, ending right there at that sign. And this reminds us of our beloved, of our bridegroom, whom we should have a same heart echo. He that is a thirst, let him take the water of life freely. And in that same account where he said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft, it was immediately followed by, I will make you fishers of men. And they left their boats and followed him. It's all right. This is a whole commission. This is a whole opportunity that our same great shepherd is showing us. The one who was our sin offering, who was our atonement. And here as we are around the Day of Atonement, reminded how Christ fulfilled that incredible shadow at the time of Passover when he was also offered as the Lamb of God. He also fulfilled the role of the high priest and also as the goat sin offering that was offered on behalf as atonement for the people. So many incredible pictures that are coming together right here where we are right now, but also leading us on this celestial learning journey, pointing us what is ahead, what is the conclusion of the celestial learning journey, 1,260 days after the Revelation 12 sign, which he also showed us on this very same journey. What is the end? It is the redeeming goat who became atonement for the fishes. And this is a job he has given us as we see the day approaching in so many ways. Things about to be released here. So many things, so many trumpet calls from our bridegroom telling us that he still is calling out to the fish even during the days ahead. And he desires to offer atonement, that he offers the water of life freely to the fish. We see this picture where he's leading and pointing us what is ahead. This time he still desires to call so many souls to salvation in the days ahead. And that is the call we see going out right now with the brook Cherith with the work that the Lord is doing preparing here on the ground, it is literally a tangible demonstration that he has great concern for the fish. And it ties in exactly, literally, to the celestial learning journey that he has showed us going back to Revelation 12 sign and beyond. It is part of the journey. The ultimate conclusion is that he desires to save and redeem the fish, redeem the souls for eternity. And this is the picture that we see on the celestial learning journey ahead of us, but also in hindsight behind us with the Revelation 12 sign and everything that is also pegged to the conclusion there too. And then considering right here down on the ground, our Lord is preparing boats. He's preparing vessels. He's preparing nets. And he's sending out these nets to you in different corners of the world with the same instructions. Launch out into the deep. Let down the nets. Let down the nets. Because our Lord still desires to save the fish. And he wants us to be a part of it. He says, let down your nets for a draft. The fish are over there. Go out. Let down the nets. Now is the time. And we are at a very late hour, friend. This is what we must be focusing on now. Redeeming what very short time we have left. To have an ear to hear what our beloved is pointing out to us, what he is showing us about the lateness of this hour, how there are fish just waiting all around us. We just need to let down the nets because they won't be there for long. We're at a time of opportunity where he is saying, rise up, gird up, brighten up, and let down the nets. Launch out, get away from the shore, get out of the boat. Now is the time to let down the nets. 
and he is giving us the nets to do it too. And that is my heart's desire as we see the day approaching. Understanding he has shown us the day approaching on the celestial clock. He's shown us it on the geopolitical clock. We have so many reasons showing us. Posters, videos showing us. Yes, we see the day approaching. He's been showing it to us. He's been trying to make us understand that we are running out of time. And we must be redeeming the time. Not wasting the time. But so much the more redeeming the time. Buying it back. Buying it for eternity and provoking one another unto love and two good works that will reach out as nets into the days ahead. And that will touch so many hearts and draw them to our bridegroom. He that is a thirst, let him take the water of life freely. Our love and compassion is the call that goes out in the days ahead. It's part of the nets that will touch so many hearts and souls in the days ahead. And this is what our Redeemer, the Lamb of God, who was offered on our behalf, and so many different shadows and ways and manners, so many expressions of his love for us. Now is the time when we need to consider what he has done for us. And we love him because he first loved us. And likewise, we should be a demonstration here at this late hour so much more of his love through good works to others. And so as we see the day approaching where we are expecting our Redeemer, our High Priest, whoever maketh intercession for us, let us now so much the more provoke each other unto love and unto good works, launching out into the deep and letting down the nets. We hear our beloved coming. We hear our master coming. The Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, our bridegroom, our beloved. He's calling to us to rise up, to trim our lamps, and to shine bright for him. Being found in his service, going out to meet him, hearing him, heeding and obeying him, loving him and serving him first and highest above all else, launching out into the deep and letting down his nets till he comes. Maranatha!